hate lipstick. It is just not my style, so when I decided to put it on March 15, 2012, people knew I was up to something. <laughs> Job interview. I was two months away from graduating college, two months away from taking my new degree in biomedical engineering and walking it straight into unemployment. I was going to do <laughs> Whatever it took to make sure that I landed the job I was interviewing for that day, even if it meant going so far as to put on lipstick. Now, I don't know what happened when I walked into that office, something magical. Maybe I was born with it, maybe it was Maybelline. <laughs> Regardless, I crushed that interview. At the end of it, the primary person I was speaking with said, Riley, you really impressed us today. Not only do you have the technical expertise, you are funny, you are enthusiastic, you have ideas exploding out of your head, you have so much vision for our company, and we're not really looking to hire people like that. <laughs> she obviously could see the look on my face, so she felt the need to explain herself. She said, Riley, we are looking for a quality control engineer. We need someone to stand at the end of a production line and check little boxes to make sure that our products are meeting FDA specification. After talking to you for 60 minutes, I could tell you would hate coming to work every day if that was the job you had to do. And she was absolutely right. No amount of lipstick was gonna cover up the fact that I didn't wanna be a quality control engineer. For the longest time, I had known I wanted to be an inventor. I wanted to take new products to market. But when I started going out into the real world searching for jobs, very quickly I realized product development opportunities were few and far between. So I set my sights lower and lower and lower and lower to the point that I would have taken any job that would have offered me a paycheck. While I didn't leave the interview with a new job, I did leave with a new outlook on life and an understanding of how important it is to choose a career that I loved. I went back to school with eyes wide open, hoping I would find an opportunity I originally had missed, and I did very quickly. During my senior year at Clemson, a group of classmates and I were developing a shoulder brace, and I thought to myself, what if instead of chasing jobs, we finished out this shoulder brace that we had started? I presented this proposition to my classmates, and immediately Chelsea said, I'm in, let's do it. And we decided from that day forward, we would become medical brace entrepreneurs. Now, most people think when you start your own company, you just hire yourself as the CEO and you're on your way. Absolutely not how it worked in my case. I had to interview for this position with my mom. <laughs> I distinctly remember going home, sitting my mom down in our kitchen and saying, I have a crazy idea. Instead of going and getting a job, getting a paycheck, would it be okay if Chelsea and I pursued developing out this shoulder brace? And before you say no, I just want to remind you of something. You have always said you wanted me to get a job close to home. <laughs> and if I become an entrepreneur, not only will I live in your home, I will work out of your home and we'll be together forever. <laughs> and I was absolutely shocked by her reaction to this. She said, Riley, you are at a point in your life where you have nothing. <laughs> you have no house, you have no husband, no kids, you have no car payments. You literally have nothing to lose and only things to gain from this experience. So as long as I see you and Chelsea working as hard as you can, you are more than welcome to stay, live, and work in my house. Guys, I got the job. 21 years old, I was an entrepreneur, a medical device inventor. I got exactly what I wanted, and I was terrified. Because my mom brought up a very excellent point. I did have nothing, right? Forget about the house and the car and the kids. I didn't have job experience. We didn't have a finished product. I had no money, no network, no mentors. How in the world was I supposed to start a business from nothing? How could zero ever equal one? The engineer in me told me that this equation made absolutely no sense, but despite what my head said, my heart said, go with it anyway. So with no experience, no mentors, no network, no money, no product, Chelsea and I set out to see what we were made of. The very first thing we did was talk to anyone who would listen. I distinctly remember packing up my 2003 Nissan Altima with shoulder braces 
and I would literally drive around town and get out at any hospital system, any pharmacy, any physical therapy office, and demand to speak to someone in charge. And a lot of times they demanded I left. <laughs> But every once in a while, someone gave me a clue, a hint of what to do next, a piece of information, a valuable contact. And slowly but surely, Chelsea and I became experts in our field. Before you knew it, we were known in the state of South Carolina as the shoulder brace girls. <laughs> and while that was extremely flattering, we had really exhausted talking the talk, and it was time to sit down and walk the walk. We needed to make a shoulder brace. So Chelsea and I found free office space in town. We loaded it with elastic and Velcro and plastic and cardboard, pretty much everything but glitter. And we got to work. Day in and day out, week in and week out, we worked on this product. People in our office thought we were crazy. They called our cubicle the arts and crafts corner. They thought what we were doing was a preschool art project, but we knew better than that. We knew we were onto something much bigger. And eventually, we had a product. It was sitting on this mannequin we bought. It was red, blue, yellow, black, white, and peach. The oddest looking thing you've ever seen, however, in our guts, we thought it might actually work. But thinking it works and knowing it works are two different things. So we set out to find our first victim. <laughs> and very quickly, we found a professional hockey player in town who needed a brace to get back to play. Now, mind you, this is no run in the mill hockey player. This is a six foot four, 215 pound fighting machine. They imported this guy from Canada. <laughs> He is the real deal. Chelsea and I put the brace on him, and it worked. And this was a huge moment of validation for our company because no longer did we feel like students finishing a homework assignment, we were businesswomen starting a company. Our shoulder brace wasn't an arts and crafts project, it was an invention. And in that moment, I realized something so important, something I didn't fully understand in the beginning of this journey. While we had no experience and no mentors and no product and no money and no network, we had one good idea. And that was enough to get started. All too often, I meet people with ideas for businesses, ideas for products, and they give me a laundry list of reasons of things they don't have and why they can't start a business. I have no time, I have no money, I have no experience, I have no business starting a business. What I'm here to say is forget all the zeros, because one idea is enough to create one business. And another important ingredient to success is support. Had my mom not told me yes, had that interviewer not told me no, I wouldn't be standing here today. Because of all the people who gave me their time, their money, their resources, their energy, I have been able to build a company around this class project. So when you meet people with ideas, if you yourself have an idea, don't let fear hold you back. Don't be distracted by all the zeros. Go, make, do, create. Why bother? Because your dream job depends on it.